Daily Guide, GN Bank siphoned $62 million, uh, according to the Bank of Ghana. And government not closing banks deliberately, information minister says so. MTN gets new hero of change, appear to break silence. Mahama exposed over $52 million WA regional hospital. The Ghanaian Times, president inaugurates 160 bed Upper West Regional Hospital in WA and uh, mayhem in Lukula. Several houses torched, police could military dispatched to restore law order. Let's resolve chieftaincy disputes amicably. Niai Bonte appeals to Gaz on Homo War. President opens three day af ta uh, com confab today in Accra. And in tomorrow's issue, we've been told that the top 10 price competitive oil marketing companies as at the 16th of August 2019. You'll get to know them tomorrow. Uh, Ketsi the Ghanaian Times. The Daily Graphic. Continuity in governance, key to development. President says at WA Regional Hospital opening. And 5GS officials cited over missing 20, uh, two, 2 million, uh, <laughs> 276,621,000. million six hundred twenty one thousand. Graphic Needy Fund launches fund raising and the final newspaper 52 million dollars uh, 60 160 bed hospital commissioned and government rejects claims of deliberately closing down financial institutions of opponents gn savings is solvent customers should remain calm dr indum and gs shifts reopening for shs3 students to august 25 finally the bnf team are ATM still relevant with the increasing cash less payment options? You want to read this. The identities of crisis of ma marketing strategy in SMEs in developing markets. And Bank of Ghana completes a uh, cleanup of financial sector. My guest this morning, the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Ifutu constituency, the Alexander Kwamina Afeyo Marking, is here with me. Council, good morning. One second. And how are you doing? I'm fine. Thank and uh, also, lawyer Sami Jemfi speaks on behalf of the NDC. He's the national. Communications officer Sam, welcome. Good morning. How are you? Thank doing? you. I'm doing great. Council, how's the grounds? Uh, I understand that the, the campaigns have started. The ground, your constituency. Well, I think uh, for the NDC. For the yes. NDC, not for you. Yes, yes. I mean they haven't their primaries. Okay. So yes, of course. Obviously, uh, more politicking uh, for MPP. Mm. The often constituencies. Uh, uh, live uh, with political activities. Mm -hmm. Of course, for those of us who are uh, not uh, going through primaries mm -hmm. now, okay. uh, the most important thing is hard work. Right. Because um, this year is a critical year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, projects must start. There must be goodwill. Mm -hmm. You must start base. You don't start it in 2020. Mm -hmm. You know, because... Um, if you are not careful and people see you showing face mm -hmm. in 2020, then it's like you waited for election year. So they, I'll you. urge all my colleagues okay. to, to, to speed up. Okay. Yes. Great. So uh, let's start. Um, yesterday, the, the president, or no, over the weekend, I must say, the president inaugurated a 160-bed capacity uh, regional hospital in the Upper West region. That's good news. Um, it's traveled through President Kufo's time, uh, through President Mills, President Mahama, and now President Akufuado has had to uh, finally cut the sword, bring the respite to the people. But the president mentioned one thing that is, is striking. He said continuity in governance is very important. And this hospital, as has been inaugurated now, is one of the products of this. If we continue like that, we will grow better and faster. Is that an opinion you want to agree with? In principle, I agree with that opinion. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not sure whether President Akufuado is living up to that, you know, uh, opinion. First of all, let me state that I'm glad that at long last, this regional hospital has been commissioned mm -hmm. to uh, help expand access to healthcare delivery for the people of Upper West Region and improve on the quality of healthcare delivery because you know that um, access to healthcare is a challenge in most parts of the country, especially in the northern part of the country. This project is 
the legacy of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. How and so? I think that how, how that, so? that must be put on how record. How so when the funds were sourced under President Kufuor in 2008, not that's not, that's approved not. by Parliament? No, and that's not accurate. That's not accurate? Yeah, I will explain so? that to you. Mm -hmm. I say that it is the legacy of John Dramani Mahama because it was the Mahama administration which sourced the funding for the project, mm -hmm. commenced the construction of the project, and at the time we were leaving office, the project was almost, you know, at the stage of completion. Mm -hmm. You know, the vision of building a regional hospital for the people of Upper West mm -hmm. uh, came up somewhere 2000, the year 2000, under uh, the government of Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we exited par President Kufuado and the MPP, President Kufuor and the MPP took over from mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't until middle 2008 that we heard something about that plan mm. to build a regional hospital for the people of Upper West. Mm. Specifically, it was in April 2008 when a memorandum of understanding was signed between the then Kufu administration and Eurojet the Invest SA mm. for the construction of several hospitals across the country, including an Upper West Regional Hospital. Mm. Subsequent to that, in October and November that same year, Cabinet and Parliament approved the agreement. Mm -hmm. But note that no funding was made available. It was just a contractual arrangement between the government of Ghana and the contractor. What that, what and that so mean? when some understanding, legal understanding, between government and that private Egyptian, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a, a developer mm. that it was going to facilitate the construction of several hospitals across the country. But no funds had been made available. In other words, we didn't inherit, inherit any funds in any dedicated account for any of those projects. Would you say that they... No, if uh, I can, if, the, if, if you allow me to land your... your would have give, softened the grounds for you of to course to then that is why i'm giving I'm, you see well, that's why i'm giving credit where credit is due that legal arrangement was done mm -hmm. but that is not the same as saying that funding was made available by that administration mm -hmm. because it was when we took over from president kofor in 2009 fast forward to 2010 mm -hmm. that we officially cut the sword for the project that sword cutting ceremony was done on behalf of the then president by his vice president mm -hmm. john dramani mahama mm -hmm. And even though we cut the sword on the 31st of July 2010 for the project, you realize that the project stalled for several months. There was no work on the site because the promised funding for the pro project did not materialize. The contractor couldn't come true. And the excuse they gave at the time was that they were caught up in the Arab Spring and other negative developments in the Middle East, which made it difficult for them to raise the needed funds. And so you recall that in the run-up to the 2012 election, then running mate of the MPP, Baumia, and other MPP stores went to the site and ridiculed the then government, attacking John Dramani Mahama for, in quote, fooling the people of Upper West. Mm -hmm. they, said they described the project as a ghost project because there was nothing there. We had explained that we were having challenges raising funds and all that. And so when, subsequent to the 2012 elections, John Dramani Mahama won, he quickly you know, set in place a process to ensure that the project was executed by security funding for the project. And what we did was that we issued a security instrument in the form of a promissory note mm. to the contractor, to the developer, who through Barclays Bank was able to raise bonds of, an, uh, of about $52 million as the funding mm. for the project. Mm. This money was kept in an escrow account at the at Bank of Ghana in 2014 and added to Ghana's public debt for the first time in 2014. So when the MPP in opposition were accusing us for borrowing too much and all that, this project was part of it. The amount, the cost of the project, the funding for the project was secured in 2014 and added to our public debt in 2014. Was Deposited it not, was it not because, in an escrow account. Was it not because it stalled because you, you couldn't Because the raise, promised funding couldn't materialize. Couldn't raise there was no, you, you understand? So we had to do the funding engineering all over. And it was until that, that actual construction commenced in 2014. Mm. So construction commenced in 2014, even though the short cutting was done by JM, then Vice President, in 2010. 
Because we secured funding late 2013 through that promissory note that we, is we, we okay. issued to the contractor. So, the project was supposed to take 36 months, meaning that by end of 2017, the project should have been completed. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for this government, at the time they took office, the project was about 95% complete, and that the is the fact. The president says uh, delayance at the ports to clear uh, So, the delayance at the ports, materials. so it is Go two and a half years, two and a half years, close you, to two, or let's say close to two years. You doubt that? With just about 3% of the work to be completed. Are you doubtful? It, 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 it just doesn't show, you know, commitment on the part of government. It didn't show. And you see, I am happy that at least, it's, it's said that it's better late than never. I'm mm. happy that at long last the project has been commissioned. You do know mm. that it took several street protests, agitations, demonstrations from the people of Upper West region before this project was commissioned. Really? Yes. There has been not less than three demonstrations in the Upper West region in recent time demanding for this facility. By who? I mean, the people. Mm of Upper West Region. Because you know that this medical facility was supposed to serve a certain specified purpose in the area. And because of the fact that it had not been commissioned, the people in the area had to travel long distances to seek okay. medical care, R which was very bad. Let's look so, at the president's, so, 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 the president's so, so, call for continuity in government. So you see, so you see, so you see when, and before I come there, when I see MPP social media activists try to appropriate credit for this project, try to share you know, the glory for this project and all that. I cringe. I say these people, why, why can't because they, it why is can't very they? shameless. What have they done? What, what is their contribution to the project? Very negligible. These are the projects that they describe as ghost projects, overpriced projects, inflated projects. They said they were Photoshop projects, artistic impressions, and today they want to take credit for that. They cannot be approbating and reprobating. As to what the president says about continuity and how that is critical for our developmental agenda as a country, mm -hmm. I cannot, but agree with him. But you see, he is not leaving that today. This is an go example. to This is an example. What has he done? What is his contribution? Negligible. But for the demonstrations and the agitations and all that, this project would have been there, gathering dust for the next one year. Today, go to the University of Ghana Medical Center. Is the facility being utilized? What is happening to the Bank of Ghana Hospital? What is happening to the Sewa Regional Hospital that President Mahama commenced? For the people of Ashanti region, the Afari Military Hospital, the Bekwai, the Konongo, the Formena District Hospitals. Okay. All these Point projects, all these projects are, 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 are now covered with weeds. Most of them, Formena, recently I saw a documentary, I think by TV3 okay. and all that, and I was very sad. Point, so point you see, made. it is true that continuity is key, mm -hmm. but the present must move beyond the rhetorics and the platitudes and take concrete action to give effect to that mantra. Mm -hmm. Today, you go to our hospitals and you see the sorry and the harrowing conditions that patients... And I'm ending. I'm Very ending on this. Note. Johnny, no, no, I'm ending on this. Ended. Grateful. No, just, yeah, no, just no, 30 have, seconds. Because it is key. You have ended. You see children lying on tables, pregnant women lying on floors because there are no beds, there are no health facilities. You've borrowed so much money, you've done nothing. Yet an administration has constructed the, several the of these projects. Sam, just, just, for your time. just commission them, complete them. This government Harris cannot your do. microphone is off. What Thank kind you. of government Thank is this? Thank you very much. Uh, Lawyer your marking. So, Sami says he agrees with the president in principle for that nine continuity minutes. is good for our growth, but he doesn't see the president living that, uh, that maxim, and he believes that, look, you're, you're throwing dust into our eyes. What, what do you say? This is good news for the people of the Upper West. The positives and the negatives. <laughs> Let's go. Well, uh, you know, you realize that um, when my good friend was trying to give the background mm. in his narrative, he choked somewhere, and I took note of all that. Okay. Uh, he said funding, securing funding was not successful mm. until 2014, mm. but he's forgotten that he himself had said that there was already a parliamentary approval mm. on the source of funding. Mm. And when no, he was... No, not on the source. I didn't say on the source of funding. Mm. On the contractual yeah, agreement. But, but not yes, source of yes. Funding. But then yeah. government couldn't have raised an instrument mm. for the transaction without first coming to parliament. And I was a finance committee member. Okay. So you cannot tell me that there was some constitutional, you know infringement mm. or there was some illegality you know on that 
So let's get the fact right. Else, people will not take us serious, as if politicians are always petty and all that. The fact of the matter is that there was this initiative to have this hospital. Kufour's administration secured funding and got a contractor to do the job. You actualize it. I mean, nobody can take it away from you. It's like the Winneba uh, Trauma uh, Center. Uh, Center. It was part of the various initiatives. That's when you came, the funding was already there. Ali Muhammad cut the sword, and you continue. I mean, it, it ends the matter. Not long ago, your own uh, uh, flag bearer was calling on President Akufuado to see to the completion of some of the projects they came to meet. So if this has been completed, does it also create another political issue? The, you said you did nothing. 3% of the work means nothing. You know, allow some political jabs. I mean, allow it. It's, it's normal. You know, if, 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 if nothing had happened, they would even blame us more. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, recently, uh, we had issue with... Uh, the Medina, mm. the footbridge. Mm. That they were all over in town Adenta that we should complete. Yes, mm. Medina, Adenta. Mm. And when we completed it, they also went to take pictures now questioning the design. Mm. You know, so when it comes to petty politicking, uh, our friends will, you know, uh, have their own style. Mm. They will not stop. You want the thing done. The thing has been done. It's like the way they wouldn't even want to sit up one day and say, look, we had once said free SHS was not possible. These gentlemen and women have succeeded in implementing it. Let's give them credit. You see that today they will say it's not possible. Oh, when we come, we'll set up a committee. We'll review this. We'll review that. We'll do this. Whereas in real terms, even the issue of the double track that they've been criticizing. Correlation, I am looking No, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm citing. No, no, these are related matters. Okay. Allow me. Mm. I'm trying to tell you that the NDC has gained notoriety. Okay. Questioning almost everything. Mm. And the bad faith they're in. So I need to give you an example. They, they, they say you're taking too much credit. And for you, what? For what, what, did, what did the president say? And I'm telling you that mm. even in free SHS, they, this has been their posture. Mm. Even in school feeding, where government has covered almost all schools, when they came, you remember that in 2009, mm -hmm. when they came, they started talking about one-time one, one premium. Mm. They stayed in office for eight years. They could not add on to any of the social intervention programs that had been initiated by the Kufo regime. Not one. And here and now, I humbly invite my colleague to point to us a single successfully initiated and implemented social intervention policy by their administration. How does that respond to the president's question of we are continuity well, West and, and for growth? Very well. How does that? I am, I am letting you know mm. that if we talk of continuity, we are premising it on facts mm. what are those facts that look we at we had the opportunity we laid a solid foundation mm. we put in place some social intervention policies okay you came for eight years you didn't end on but you continue these social intervention programs mm. school feeding they continued free maternal care they continue somewhere they they they, they, they could not sustain it the metro mass mm. program they continue the sanitation program we put in place, they continued. Mm. I am telling you that if we are talking of continuity today, mm. it is nothing new. And that I'm also trying to let you know mm -hmm. that for the eight years that they came, they themselves could not add a single one. Even if they attempted, they could not successfully implement same. Mm. But we have come today. We have added on to the social intervention programs. Mm. And I've mentioned to you Free SHS have talked about NAPCO mm -hmm. to deal with the unemployment situation. We have not 100% succeeded in that. Mm -hmm. But that initiative has been there. People at least are in there. Example is the nursing trainees. Mm -hmm. They complete, they sit at home. At least they had the opportunity to do one year mm -hmm. and then they got recruited 
by will I get to respond to all the tangential issues which are not part of the topic? Today, a health facility has been inaugurated. Okay. And the president says, look, continuity in governance is all that democracy seeks to achieve. Mm. Therefore, we came to meet this. We started it. In between you came, we've continued. I think that Sami should have limited himself to the point where he himself commended Mr. President. Well, why, why is it difficult? He says he doesn't see, and, and, and no, I'm asking, yes. why is it difficult for succeeding governments to, to look at and adopt pro programs and projects of preceding governments? For example, we've heard of contracts that have been abrogated you know, with the advent of at the advent of a new government, you say, oh no, this one is not. And we know so many of those projects dotted around this country. Why is it difficult for us to have a national agenda instead of a certain political party agenda? Why? You see, national agenda, I agree. Party manifesto is also critical because it is the document upon which you have voted for. Must it not be consistent with the national plan? It must be, I agree with, plan. I'm saying mm. I agree with you. Mm. That is not to say that any other thing done by your predecessor or your opposing uh, uh, party mm. in government, mm. you know, uh, is all prudent. You look at it, you review, mm. and adopt those that you think are consistent with the vision of the country, mm will fit into the national development agenda. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying here that this government has not departed from those core values that are expected of a government that looks at development as core to it mandate. So, so they cannot. I mean, they can be running to town and say, this project has not been completed, that project has not been completed. You were here. But, but, about, but, that, but that is true. Hold on. Hold on mm -hmm. a second. A month or so ago, I was here with my good friend Kwame Abuja. Okay. Some projects, road construction projects, mm -hmm. are ongoing in his constituency. Mm -hmm. When the minister at the time had not considered it and the contractor had not been paid, he raised the issue on the floor. Mm -hmm. Then, when the contractor went back to site and started the project again, he again said, Oh, this is a Mahama legacy and order. I'm saying that in spite of all of this, mm. this government has been consistent because you've been elected so, so, to ensure so, the development. So, 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 of so the here's people. my final question. You are you. not you are not you are not here Cam because somebody likes you or somebody hates Cam you. Counsel, here's my final it's, question. It's, it's it, here's my final question yeah. to you. So you come and there are projects that are almost done. Would you rather complete those projects or you would start another social intervention that is capital intensive? And which will drain all your funds, and then while you are struggling with that, you're also grappling to finish projects. Which which is the best option? Do you finish the projects and and finish them, and because they are also social interventions, or you start a new one altogether and try to complete this one? Aside? Let's situate your question in real situations. So, if NPP comes into office and it wants to implement free SHS, mm. that's a social intervention right. program. Mm. You know that a chunk of our youth don't get access to secondary education. Many people for poverty, um, uh, salary levels and all that, they struggle. Mm. So you want to deal with that issue. Okay. Anything that you do, whatever decision, mm. in terms of uh, opportunity costs, mm. economies of scale, mm. you make sure you are doing this, but somebody would, some other... Uh, uh, aspect of the economy will suffer. Mm. There's a difference between projects mm. as part of social intervention mm. and real social intervention programs that are meant to benefit everybody mm. to take off a burden. Mm. So, for instance, we promise that we'll look at tariffs, mm. electricity, water. Mm. We lift up to that promise and we cut it. Could you, for example, now, be, before the if, implementation if, if, of a free SH plus program, have completed the e blocks, uh, if you had allowed, which, if, which would have set the tone? If, if, if you had, if uh, allowed me to flow to end the point, else, okay, okay. I don't really complete Okay, my quickly, voice. because Sami needs to take a bite, then we, we change topics. You see, it is not for you to come and say that, look, you need to complete somebody's, uh, some project that have been initiated before your own programs. Mm -hmm. you, you can do that. 
No politician ever mm. can do that. What you need to do is to look at the critical areas. Mm. Are you saying that the 200 uh, day schools mm. that NDC promised, that at the time they were leaving office, they had completed and handed over less than 50, would have to be completed before the implementation of free SHS? No, that would not be prudent. What is important is to start the free SHS. Meanwhile, as you go along, you continue to improve on the facilities. Those that need to be completed, you complete them because you need to go along with that. I talked about double track because when we started, you realized that there was a challenge with the numbers. Okay. So it couldn't have, the whole stream couldn't have continued. <laughs> your, your, so your time is there up was also. a need to introduce a double track to be able to address your, the infrastructure your, your, your time is up. Issues. Okay. Thank you so very you much. Cannot, the M NDC cannot say mm. that since we came into office, all projects in the educational sector, mm. the secondary schools that were building, those that were at various stages of completion, mm. we've abandoned them. Okay. They cannot say that. They can't say that. Some. You can, and I challenge uh, them some, if they, 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 want uh, to, some, they want to create that impression. Mm. And I'm sure the Ministry of Education will come out, at least in, at Winnipeg. Okay. I can confidently say that we have given them a new assembly hall. Mm. It's been completed. Okay. At least mm. I, can, I know okay. it's there. Okay. Some, you, you, in uh, other okay. areas... Mm. Classroom blocks, okay. oh, the well, e blocks have been completed. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, uh, Johnny. So let's deal with the uh, rest issues uh, rather than the, it says you, you the can't petty say political. Uh, you know, stop, stop being uh, petty uh, uh, because where credit is due, you must give it. I, I am, I am, must move forward as a country. I am surprised that my bro my senior brother will suggest that I'm being petty. No, no, you are saying, no, no, I will not. For only, let me put okay, it you didn't say that. Then I, I, I no, no, I'm saying that politicians. Politi yeah, thank we you, shouldn't yeah, be petty. I don't. Exactly. But you no, said no, that we didn't attack people. No, yes, so so that's no problem. Not, not, advice, I don't no. attack people, please. But you know, I mean, the, the, truth, the, truth, the truth of the matter of is that the only person who has engaged in pettiness, you know, and who are still engaging in pettiness are brothers from the MPP. And my senior brother here has exhibited that. You know why? It is pettiness when you don't have the courage, the boldness, the honesty, and the humility to concede that a certain project is not your project, but that of your predecessor. It is maturity for you to say that this is the handiwork of my predecessor. I am giving credit where credit is due. I commend him for that. That is what is maturity. It is rather petty to seek to appropriate for yourself that which you know nothing about. Why? See, when I, when, what are we discussing? I was dealing with misinformation being put out by social media communicators of the New Patriotic Party that suggest that this Upper West Regional Hospital project is a project for which funding was secured by the Kofu administration and for which you know, and a, a project which was completed by the Akufuad administration and all that, trying to share the glory for that. I am saying that, yes, the contractual arrangement was done by the Akufuad administration. Mm -hmm. That is not pettiness. That is maturity. That is honesty. But it is a fact, like I've told you, that the funding was secured in 2014 and added to our public debt in 2014. That is a fact. If you have contrary fact, mm -hmm. facts, facts, I, I, I do that. They say if they are not it is a fact. It, you will still complain. No. Now they have completed it. You After have you have wasted two and a half years on a project which you could have completed in three months, you still you, you, you are still telling us that you deserve applause, you deserve plaudits for that. You've wasted two and a half years on something you could have done in but, three but months. But you also had a long time to raise funds. You couldn't. Ah, but at long last in 2014 we did. We commenced the construction at the time we were leaving office. It was 95% complete, meaning that we we're on it, schedule. It took you four so, years, four years to get funds after 2010. Exactly. That's, that's, and, that's, and so, when, so why can't you put up with two years? No, but at least at the time we were leaving office, the project was about 95, 97% complete. Okay. So we did a lot. Mm. You understand? Now, this is my point. When you go about accusing your predecessor for borrowing too much, constructing ghost projects, mm. overpriced projects, Photoshop and artistic impression projects and all that, only to turn around to steal those projects as your project, are you not being petty? So that advice it goes still, very well for you. You see, assuming without still admitting, not too strong a word. assuming it's still not appropriate, too let me use that word, you know, assuming without admitting 
that even it was President Kufour, President Kufour contributed to the project. Let's even grant him that. Is that is that one to your record? Why is pres is the same name of Nana Dodanko Kufuado Kufour? No, Where the, are party, Nana so. Kufuado's own projects? What Ghanaians are saying is that from Osage for Dr. Kwame Krumah's time to Dom Dramani Mohammed's era, mm. Ghana, our total public debt was just about 120 billion Ghana cities. Mm. In only two and a half years, that has increased by a whopping 84 billion Ghana cities. Today, and, our public and, debt and is 204 see, billion. And yet, there is not a hand coop. Tell us the infrastructure projects you have done to improve the socio-economic needs of Ghanaians. He's here talking about an assembly hall. An assembly hall. Free Your free predecessor free was building nothing to you. airports, terminal three, regional hospitals, and all that. Free, free SHS, free free SHS, SHS was not done with borrowed funds. And the total amount of money they have invested in free SHS so far is just 3.6 billion Ghana cities. Okay. And yet they have wasted 9.6 billion on corruption. Okay. They invest Thank more you. in corruption than even free SHS. Thank you very but much. But to wrap up, Thank no, you. please, no, no, had, you, uh, just 30 seconds. Sammy, I mean, you had I a long, a long you see, one. You see, you I don't my, say these things <laughs> I spoke, I, in I spoke just one minute. For, I spoke for seven 12, minutes. 12 minutes. No, you wrote it. No, no. No, no, no you wrote it. I'll check it like that. I'll do that. I'll end in 30 seconds. You see, I spoke for seven minutes. No, 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 I'm checking no, 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 the clock. That's why for nine me. minutes. You see, he himself wrote the time. You see, I'll make, I'll make, I'll make two. I'll make two. Sammy, and that was you yourself. You were there. You spoke for nine minutes. Oh, hold on, hold on. For seven minutes. Okay, seven seconds. I'll make just two points. No, no, you gave me. You gave me thirty seconds. No, 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 no. You just heckling me. I have not given you thirty seconds. I beg you. First, I allowed you. I allowed you. Sammy, I allowed you. Nine minutes. I seven minutes. I allowed you. Now he's rebutting with you. Are you counsel? You are my senior brother. I allowed him space because Johnny, my senior he was giving he's back, to a background to it. So I gave him Johnny. a bit of latitude. Johnny. I don't Johnny. have a problem, but so now, 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 so now, now, so now he cannot speak again. Now, so now he cannot speak oh, Johnny, again. I just wanted no, to make no, a nobody will speak again. Thank you very much. Your oh. thoughts and comments so you, on WhatsApp. You, you succeeded in one, but, six, six, but I'll still come back to it. Uh, well, we, I was checking my clock. I've been checking my clock. Let's let's quickly move on to the banking sector. The governor of the Bank of Ghana says that the the cleanup is over. We have spent money, but we're also looking at the uh, colossal job losses, some 5,000 in excess. Now, the question is, should we look at the greater good of cleaning up the sector, saving depositors fund, and ensuring that we have a solid foundation to grow the economy? Or should we look on the other side of uh, job losses, 5,000 and over, and where these families could possibly be, uh, you know, be in, in some form of bitterness throughout. I start with you, Council. Uh, for your marking. Hmm. I know somebody wants to wants to push in something, but I won't allow it. What does he want? No, no. He wants to oh, go back to council the council. So allow please, me. Please, 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 please when, go it, ahead. When, it, when it gets to my please, time, please go I'll, ahead. I'll do that uh, the, the 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 cleanup. So far, how far? What do you see? Job losses, greater good, spending money to clean the sector. No prosecutions yet. Um, you see, if you meet a system that is not working, your first responsibility is to fix it. Mm. Um, if somebody goes to the bank and has his savings there, his legitimate expectation is that when he signs a check, he will be paid. Right. So where there are difficulties, mm. quite obviously, there is the need for an intervention. Mm. You see, our friends in opposition should rather commend us mm. for such steps. There should be a point where politicians would have to build consensus mm. that, oh, as for this one, it is a national issue. Mm -hmm. As for this one, it is not about party ideology. Mm. It comes as a surprise to hear mm. the NDC mm. talk of the MPP collapsing businesses. This is a party that believes in private enterprise, entrepreneurship, property owning. People should have the ability to do their own businesses, create jobs. For this government, job creation is not a duty of the public sector. Job creation is not a duty of government. Job creation is a duty of the private sector. Create the enabling environment for the private sector to grow. But where there is some seeming indiscipline, mm -hmm. where there is some seeming lapses, irregularities, there's a need for 
the regulator to come in. Mm. How the regulator does it is also another issue. And the interlocking relationship between the regulator and government mm. also creates another, you know, uh, impression. Mm. Listen, in 2014, I was in parliament. And President Mahama came to deliver the State of the Nation address. Mm -hmm. Page 5 of the said address, paragraph 2 of page 5, and I want my colleagues to check. He said, among other things, that the poor supervision by Bank of Ghana resulted in the DKM God is love problem. Mm -hmm. President Mahama did not miss words. These were his words. That the poor supervision, the lack of supervision. Mm -hmm. To me, that was when President Mahama, mm -hmm. and for that matter, the NDC government, should have taken action. How could it have intervened? Put in compelling policy measures that would get Bank of Ghana to get to work. Because these were the words of the president that, look, a sector in charge of supervision mm -hmm. has failed the nation. The Bank of Ghana is independent. No, I'm making a point. Mm. That independence cannot override the public good, the national interest. Mm. Even at the Supreme Court, where the law is seen to be favoring a cause that goes against the nation, the Supreme Court will make a ruling and say, public policy. Mm. They would weigh the balance. Mm of convenience, the balance of costs, and say that, look, in spite of the express provision of the law, the law is in our bosom. This is our position. So I'm saying that the Bank of Ghana is independent, independent. It's independent is to the extent of it acting in good faith mm. and acting in the best interest of the people. So you're saying that uh, and the, the Mahama-led administration I am, failed? I am saying mm. that at the point where Mr. President himself mm in his own words, said that BOG had failed the nation, steps should have been taken at that time. Now, what was the extent of failure? That microfinance firms mm. had been licensed, a division or a department in charge of supervision had failed in its supervisory responsibilities, mm. and Ghanaians were having faith in these uh, uh, microfinance companies, 77 of them, investing in them, mm. and they were not getting their monies back. And bear in mind that it is the informal sector that suffered mm. because the market women, mm. they were dealing with the microfinance firms, right. they were dealing with the savings and loans because they could not afford the Stanchard, Barclays, mm. Ecobank. Mm. They could not go there. These people were setting up offices right in the center of the markets. Telling our market women, bring your savings. Do you get an indication that their confidence have been broken as we speak? The market women, I mean, you find SS obviously, leaders who... Ob who ob ob obviously, obviously, far back. So I'm saying that if today mm -hmm. we are taking that beta pill, when we're kids, and even now, I think I know that malaria treatment drugs mm -hmm. are bitter. ACTs, and they, yeah. Of course. You take them, it's bitter, you go through some discomfort, but after three days, mm. after a week, you get better, don't mm. you? Mm. It is a painful exercise, mm. I must admit. Mm. Of course, there will be job losses. That is the most painful of all. Mm. But you see, if a director of a firm, if shareholders act in a certain manner, if senior officers act in a certain manner, and these affect the company, it is the ordinary officer who suffers. Nobody's leg has been held to the fire yet. Now, I'm, I come to that. You see, when Mr. President is initiated... Oh, Sammy, Allah, this Allah, Allah. No, no, Allah. It's not good. Oh. I, I think you're going. This thing that you Alex, 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 me, yeah, Alex, I'm not even to you. I'm just Alex, signaling the Sammy, is so that we'll, we are, we'll apportion the time. Please. Bro, we talk about due process. Mm. And I am one person who believes in due process. Mm. Because due process allows for certainty. Due process gives confidence. Due process prevents chaos. Mm. And people would appreciate the outcome. Mm. So the president, eh, it was for good reasons that upon assumption of office, mm. he said, look, Attorney General has the constitutional mandate. Mm. 
but in other jurisdictions because of the politics mm -hmm. because of the fierce interests let us create an independent body charged with the responsibility of dealing with these particular offenses so that it wouldn't be as if because i am in power mm. somebody else is mm. trying to attack me so to me Ghanaians would have to bear with the due process machinery mm. it may be slow but if you look at the names that are being mentioned mm. the directors of the you know, you don't want to create a certain impression that you are after somebody. Well, but the, the bank, unless, if, 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 the, if the Bank of Ghana itself, uh, per its unless, has, unless has somebody, said that, look, somebody presented somebody, fraudulent documents, somebody gave uh, illegal loans, they are alleging that Dr. Indu, for example, transferred funds without a notice of the Bank of Ghana, the finance ministry. These are serious allegations. Okay, so, utterance is made by the governor of the Bank of well. Ghana. So when, what, what else is good, there to wait so, for? Very well. Thank you for that. You see, when an investigator goes through the motion of finding out, investigating. Mm. He comes out with his report. Right. That report is now subjected to a further test. Mm. What is that test? Court, right. prosecution. Bank of Ghana is not an investigating body. Right. It is a body that has inquisitorial uh, uh, mandates. Mm. It's a regulator. It goes into a matter it set up its own uh, 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 machinery in place to inquire. Mm. It has some findings. Those findings would now have to be referred to a body that has that mandate to do the prosecutorial investigation, let me mm. put it that way. Mm. In that case, they would be now looking at the element of the offense. Mm. At this stage, Bank of Ghana cannot have the mandate of looking at the element of the offense. But they would say, okay, this is what we've detected. That funds here have been transferred to this person. It's irregular. Mm. So now we have every good reason to say mm. that we are placing your transaction on ice. Okay. Then it is referred to a third party. Okay. So I am saying that let's give them the opportunity. Okay. In any event, I cannot stop Sami and all other... Why, why are you going to him? No, no, no. I'm not going to him. I'm okay. saying that if I say Sami, I'm referring to his party. Okay. So let me put it right. Equal time. I, I cannot mm. stop the NDC mm. or any other person from criticizing okay. the conduct of Bank of Ghana. Mm. After all, that is democracy. Okay. Their actions should be questioned. Thank you. Oh, and in so much. doing, we would be able to get to the bottom of it. Okay. Oh. But for anybody to attack the government mm. and say that, oh, government is deliberately. Johnny, okay. if Nanado. Are you, closing, oh. are you closing down banks belonging to your opponents? Uh, it can never be. Okay, thank you. Sami? If, All right. if Sammy, anybody um, create that impression. Mm, but uh, in any event, if this is done, if this is done, if this is done, if this is done, if this is if 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 and if MPP, is if MPP, relax, if MPP, relax. if MPP, if MPP is closing down banks, mm. who suffers? If deliberately, we want to close down people's businesses. Johnny, can I come in now? Who is going to suffer? Sami, take, but take we it back. No, should all get the discourse. Cancel, cancel, thank right. you, thank you, cancel, and thank encourage you. people cancel, thank you. to appreciate uh, the fact that um, we need Johnny, to put things uh, right. Cancel, cancel, thank make, you very much. So, uh, the the issues flowing out of yeah. of this uh, clean up. What what what, has, what do you see? Okay, uh, let me make two quick statements, and then I will come to the financial issues. Number one. It is incomprehensible for anyone to accuse a government which ensured that free SHS was captured under the 1992 constitution, <laughs> ensured that hundreds of secondary schools were constructed, mm -hmm. ensured that as a country we commenced the implementation of progressive free secondary education with over 365,000 day students benefiting in the 2015-2016 academic year. Mm. It is incomprehensible for anybody to accuse that government mm. as being, or that party, as being against free SHS. It is a lie, it is not true, mm. and it can only be the figment of the MPP's own imagination. Okay. Again, a government which built hospitals, mm. which built roads, mm. and other socioeconomic mm. facilities, like the one we just discussed, mm. cannot be accused as having not, you know, implemented any social intervention policies. Mm. 
hospitals are not religious interventions, they are social interventions. Now, to the financial issue on the table. You see, I am very pained and worried as a Ghanaian. Why? That the Akufuado government continue to use this approach for resolving the challenges in the banking sector. This is the Bank of Ghana, not Here, the, the president. I am referring to the approach of revoking the licenses of banks and financial institutions mm -hmm. and appointing receivers, receivers to yeah. wind up those companies. That approach we maintain as a party is high-handed. Mm -hmm. It was not well thought through. Mm -hmm. It is bound to fail. It is already failing. And it is worsening the bad situation it was supposed to remedy. What's your alternative? And therefore, what, what, what's your alternative? I'm coming there. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what every sensitive government should be doing is that it should be reversing this approach. We are saying that a bailout approach would have been far better than the insensitive and callous approach the Akufuado government has adopted in killing people's businesses, people's banks, without considering the toil and sweat of the owners of these Even businesses. in the full glare, now, full glare I'm, I'm coming of there. You see, you allow me to flow, allow me to flow, no, no, you understand me. Questions. I ask you see, questions what too. is the essence of regulation? Mm. The essence of regulation is to correct, it is to reform, it is not to destroy. Well, life is full of choices. One can choose to use regulatory powers and regulatory functions mm. to build, to reform, and to improve. How, how Others can you... also choose mm. to use it to kill and to destroy. How do you, you see? How do you, how do you, Sami, hold on. Johnny, so, I, so, I will answer all your questions. No, no, you no, no. ask me your question. Allow, that, I'm allow, me, allow me so to ask this one quickly, then me. you can put them together. How do you, for example, Per this analogy you just gave me, that a bank of Ghana, a bank runs to the bank of Ghana, says, uh, I'm having challenges. Bank of Ghana says, take this chunk of money, go and recapitalize and fix your problems. They squander the money, and you say... Is that the, the case for, should... for all the banks which have been collapsed? Well, mm. Was that why Heritage Bank was collapsed? Mm. Was Heritage Bank not solvent? Was that why GM Bank... And you... That is why I say I'm coming there. Okay. Don't jump the gun. Look, other jurisdictions have been confronted with this same challenge. The United States of America, the United Kingdom, in 2008, how did they resolve the challenges? Under Gordon Brown, an emergency rescue package was announced for the banking sector. Mm. They didn't collapse banks. They gave them the shareholders time to inject fresh capital. And when they failed, government came in, provided 850 billion US dollars to build them out. You're, you're Obama not, did the same thing. The why can't example. we use? Why can't we use mm. this same approach? So I'm trying to tell you that there is an alternative. Now. What have we done in our case? You revoke licenses, you end up using the taxpayers' money. So far, we have spent 18 billion of the taxpayers' money on collapsing these banks. Mm. These monies go into a bottomless pit. Recovering them becomes difficult. Depositors don't get their money. Check the nine collapsed banks. Check the 347 collapsed microfinance mm. institutions. Till date, depositors are so struggling to have access to their monies. Mm. Thousands and thousands of jobs have been lost. Businesses have collapsed. Mm. Confidence in the financial sector keep dwindling. Apart from that, the economy is slowing down mm. with its attendant problems because of the approach they have adopted in dealing with this problem. And yet they are defending it. The, look, the, the Bank of Ghana says look, the president will get their you money are after, about after due diligence. You are speaking mm. about directors mm. and shareholders mm. and all that. It, you see, talk is cheap. Don't take the one-sided account of the Bank of Ghana okay. as an arbiter. Mm. They cannot be judges in their own cause. Mm. Listen to Dr. Papa Kwesi Indio and tell me whether the issues, the reasons, and the, and the, and the various points he has raised in his write-up are not tenable. Why would you he, understand? Why would he transfer Look, money so far, they have outside Ghana without the Bank of Ghana? And, I, I and, doubt and, that that is the case. Mm. You know what? Government itself, they talk about the actions and inactions of directors and shareholders. You know that government itself is a major corporate in the factors that have accounted for the collapse of many of these institutions. Mm. Look at the case of GM Bank and Unibank. Government owe contractors who, have, who, who went to these banks, contracted loans for various government projects. Mm. They owe these banks, some of these banks, who lended money to players in the energy sector. Mm. You are not paying them. The banks are not getting their money. And yet, you are collapsing them. When they were taking this decision to collapse banks the way they have done, did they consider the interconnectedness of the financial sector? No. So they did it in haste, collapsed banks, and as a result of that, it affected savings and loans, mm. it affected microfinance, mm. it affected rural banks, because our financial sector is very interconnected. Mm. Rural banks, 
microfinance institutions have their money, their investment with banks and so on. So if you have collapsed these banks without ensuring that depositors, mm. some of whom are these savings and loans and these other institutions who are below mm. the ladder, do not get their funds, and that creates liquidity challenges, mm. capital adequacy challenges for those businesses, do you still collapse them? Well, so, well, well so, a bailout not have cost us a similar pain? Never. What you do is that when you bail, if we had gone the American way mm. or the UK way, you still maintain confidence in the financial sector you protect jobs since this government came there has been more job losses than the than i mean job creation mm -hmm. and that for me is a misnomer the, the you, you are able says depositors no. are able to have their money because in the long run you have used 18 billion ghana cities mm -hmm. in collapsing the bank that 18 billion ghana cities could have been used to save most of these banks prosecutions and yes, prosecutions and, and you see prosecution what have they done who are they prosecuting they have been speaking for the past two years, making frivolous allegations against people. Look at how they are faring in court, in the Unibank case and in other similar cases. What is the crime of Heritage Bank? A solvent bank collapsed for no legitimate reasons. People are losing their businesses, their hard-earned income. Families are being destroyed. Okay. Parents and children are suffering because of the collapse of the financial sector. Sorry. And yet, instead of government to review its approach, government is so hell-bent on pushing through this high-handed, insensitive, callous approach of destroying business. Thank you very much. This Sammy is JV unacceptable. Speaks must for be the NDC here, the National Communications Officer. No. And uh, Alexander that is not how you Jamal build is the Honorable that Member of Parliament for an economy. if we took that is not how you build a country. He is here on behalf of Don't the NDC. Two oh, lawyers It's a very serious issue. Uh, why, why is uh, Afinio Makiri here He's giggling. Like that? You see, because he's a businessman himself. Okay. He's a politician, mm -hmm. but he's also a businessman. Now, you are killing all these banks, all these financial institutions. Where would the private sector get credit from? Who will loan to the traders in the market? Okay. The businesswomen in the market. Happy birthday to They're Vanessa Autry and to Kelvin Hine. It's your birthday today as well. Happy birthday to you. We'll see you after the break. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs>